Hello students welcome to the second lecture on classical electrodynamics at the MSc level and especially in the previous lecture I have given an outline of the course structure for the second course on electrodynamics. The first course on electromagnetism usually refers to the one that you studied in your undergraduate or the B.Sc course. So that is the terminology we are going to use and in order to start today's work we will have to or you will have to refresh the symbols and the notation used for writing down the Coulomb's law and such a thing is already explained in the first course on electromagnetism and if you have studied the Griffiths book or if you have followed the Griffiths book for your B.Sc then right away you can you will be able to understand uh, what is the meaning of uh, the notation that we are going to use such as the charge density etc so that is the point i am trying to say so there are certain things called charge distribution charge density discrete charges continuous charges and then the coulomb's law and uh, expressing the coulomb's law in vector form in integral notation no such kind of thing we are not going to discuss right now because it is supposed uh, it is supposed that we you might have studied in your bsc in case if you have not completed properly or that if you want to refresh your memory for whatever be the reason i have given the reference that please uh, please search lecture number 18 with a title charge distribution uh, in my lecture and that will give you the detailed explanation on uh, what are the symbols and the notation used to represent the charge densities as well as the vectors involved in the problem so that is how you start with so which means that you can uh, we are going to uh, write down the expression for the electric field due to an arbitrary charge distribution so i would i, I will write down that expression right now so let us now uh, <coughs> express the uh, electric field due to an arbitrary charge distribution which is represented by capital E. So I will write down capital E. So let us start with this. Capital E of R vector. Everything is a vector quantity which is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into the integral of the charge density rho of R prime rho of R prime then divided by the square of the separation distance R minus R prime square that then you have a unit vector r minus r prime unit vector so the big hat that i am drawing here is representing the unit vector and that's all about it this gives you the electric field due to an arbitrary arbitrary means any kind of charge density which is represented by rho of r prime so uh, here the point to be noted is that we are going to have a spherical symmetry so i'll write down that due to the spherical symmetry of the electric field of a point charge electric field of a point charge okay then we we can use the spherical polar coordinate system that's what i would like to tell so because of this reason we use the spherical polar coordinate system which is nothing but uh, you'll be using r comma theta comma phi so that's fine so uh, i would like to explain what i mean to say here now first of all uh, you have to consider only the point charge only if you have a single point charge let us say a positive charge you know what kind of electric field is there surrounding that particular region okay surrounding the uh, charge so everywhere on the surface of the sphere wherever you move you'll be having the uh, same magnitude <coughs> same magnitude of the electric field and the direction is always along the radius vector radius vector means from the center of the sphere which means that from the charge you draw any radius because you have infinitely many possibilities to draw the radius all of them represent the unit vectors so that 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 is what i mean to say the spherical symmetry spherical symmetry means the the value of the electric field anywhere on the surface of a given sphere once you fix the sphere of radius r then wherever you move on the sphere you have the uh, same electric field magnitude wise and uh, the direction is given by the radial direction that is radial vector 
So because you have a, a same value of the electric field everywhere on the surface of the sphere, mathematically the language used is the symmetry. So this is called the spherical symmetry. And this is for a single point charge that is written down here. Suppose if you have, instead of a single point charge, if you have a collection of point charges, which is represented by the charge density rho, then the electric field is nothing but the superposition and mathematically superposition can be written down either by a plus or that means summation. Okay, either by the, either by the summation or by, or by the integration. So now uh, the meaning of uh, the reason for using the spherical polar coordinate system is clear that the integral is only representation uh, representative of you no know, taking the summation. Okay, when you are doing the uh, summation of infinitesimal values, and that is what we call the integral, right? The integral, and therefore uh, the the concept of the point charge will be there everywhere. Okay, several of the point charges is what is going to make a charge distribution okay so therefore you are basically making infinitesimal addition of um, the spherically symmetric point charge electric field and that summation is what is represented by this um, a total electric field at the point r here the primed the primed coordinates here represent the region where the charges are present and uh, if the if the prime is not there uh, that means uh, it is the place where we are going to calculate the electric field, which means that the charges are not there. Okay, If the charges are not there in some region, it is represented without prime. And if the charges are present in that region, we will use the prime denotation. And the big hat represent the unit vector in this particular direction. That means R minus R prime has to be evaluated. That is a particular vector. For that vector, you find out the unit vector. That's the meaning of this. So now this is what we say uh, the Coulomb's law uh, in the case of uh, the continuous charge distribution and where it is understood that this integral has to be carried out. Now you need to know whether the integral is a definite integral or indefinite integral. So remember clearly that this integral is always a definite integral. The reason why it is definite integral is that the integration has to be carried out over the region where the charges are present. Okay, if the charges are not there in some region, in that region we will not evaluate the integration. So that is the meaning. So from the meaning of the integration, you will have to understand that since we are going to integrate over the region where the charges are present, it is very natural that charges will be present from somewhere to somewhere. Which means you have a starting location and then uh, go around some region and then over that region charges are going to be present. So you will be having the limits for x, so limits for y and the limits for z. So that is what I mean to say. And uh, since the charge distribution can be arbitrary, that means uh, it can spread over in this three dimension. This integral is supposed to be a three dimensional integration. Three dimensional means triple integral. Mm. So these things are implied meaning. You don't have to explicitly put a three integral here. That is not necessary. It is enough if you say that the integral is carried out over the region of space. And uh, since the space is three dimension, this integral is supposed to be triple integral. And there is uh, limits are always there because charges are present over some finite region. And therefore those limits will come therefore remember that this is going to be a definite integral so these are the implied meanings of the of the coulomb's law and we let us now represent this r minus r prime by some kind of a shorthand notation like script r so let me therefore write down that so let us reuse the shorthand notation for r minus r prime by something called a script r here that's what uh, so that uh, if it is the case, no uh, drawing this big hat is not required. So that is the meaning. So the unit vector R minus R prime, the big hat, that will become script R unit vector. Now it is uh, somewhat comfortable. So let me give the equation number one there for the Coulomb's law. So once these things are clear, then what happens is that the equation one can be written down uh, in somewhat uh, compact notation or it looks somewhat comfortable same expression is there but only the uh, the appearance of the script r will come into picture that's all about it okay so that multiplied by the r cap divided by r square yeah, this bracket is optional you can put or you need not put so ultimately 
uh you understand that the equation looks somewhat uh, simpler when compared to equation number 1 but ultimately it is the same thing but uh, there is an emphasis is there so i'll write down what is visible here is that there is a function here so what function is there is r by r square so you please see this there is an r by r square function is there so we are going to pay the attention to that that's why i'm explicitly writing the coulomb's law contains the function r by r square where r is a the numerator is a unit vector and denominator is a scalar quantity now since this function is present in uh, the coulomb's law uh, therefore uh, it is uh, it, it is better to understand this particular function so i'll write down therefore let us denote this quantity by some function f of r that is represented by r cap divided by scalar r square and of course it's a vector valued function remember that it is a vector valued function uh, and remember that the script r is uh, uh, script r is in spherical coordinate that means uh, what do you mean by that is it basically representing the radius of the sphere of radius script r so that's all about it so the the concept is therefore clear uh, that we 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 will be studying the property or some some important point about this particular function now what i am trying to say here is that if you if you uh, want to understand in terms of the cartesian system uh, then r minus r prime square could be written down as x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square this is the usual distance formula so the point i am writing here is that uh, we are not interested in cartesian system so forget about x y z that's what i am trying to say so let us denote the uh, the function alone by equation number 2 so that we can pay some attention to the nature of the function r by r square okay so let us understand this particular equation namely equation number 2 and the point to be noted is that uh, where the point to be noted is that where f of r is f of r is a vector valued function so i want to say that f of r is not a scalar okay that that's the emphasis i would like to say whether you draw uh, whether if you want you can always draw a vector on top of f so that it is vector valued function okay because of the unit vector attached there it is a vector valued function that's the meaning so to understand a particular function in vector calculus the first thing is to start with the gauss divergence theorem so <coughs> okay so here i would like to say that i'm not going to explain uh, uh, the physical meaning of the gauss divergence theorem right now because uh, because the explanation of the gauss divergence theorem is also uh, done in the bsc level or we say that the first level course on electromagnetism that is uh, we have done from our uh, integrated msc now in the other students who have done bsc in different colleges and uh, uh, who took the admission for msc such students should have Uh, also studied the gauss divergence theorem certainly in their mathematics course whether you call ancillary mathematics or whatever you call so gauss divergence theorem is something that should be familiar to uh, anyone who completed the bsc course and, but only right now what is required is that how the gauss divergence theorem is going to look like and uh, and what is that you want to evaluate in that so that is what i am going to explain right now once that is clear we will start evaluating the the expressions for the left hand side and right hand side of this particular theorem so in case if you want to uh, get a little bit uh, grip in the gauss divergence theorem please go and search uh, the the electromagnetism for the first level course uh, it is already there in the youtube and i have also explained the gauss divergence theorem maybe you search something called a primer on vector calculus okay that that is the title i believe i have given a primer on vector calculus so uh, there is some video like that uh, that is uh, meant for the uh, basics of the vector calculus required to understand the electrodynamics course okay that is how uh, i have given that particular title so let us therefore keeping this in mind i will uh, start writing down the gauss divergence theorem the statement is going to be fairly easy to uh, understand also to write it gives you the connection between the volume integral so i'll write down the volume integral the volume integral of the divergence of a vector okay so that that is equal to that is equal to the surface integral of the normal component of the vector this is how you read the surface integral of the normal component of the vector f dot ds means normal component so that's all this is the this is the gauss divergence theorem i will write the gd for gauss divergence so in our in our situation where uh, we have f of r we already have f of r right 
so we will you understand what is f there basically if you want you can put a vector valued function f so this is the gauss divergence theorem and in the cartesian in the case of the cartesian case uh, let me therefore write down that for the case of cartesian you can always write down i times do by do x etc so this is just to uh, uh, see the appearance of del in the cartesian but we are not going to use cartesian so this is the point i would like to write down that this operates on the unprimed variables so uh, i think i want to write that so what i'm trying to say is that this is unprimed x is unprimed y is unprimed z is unprimed unprimed means prime is not there is that prime y prime it is not there therefore del operator will operate in unprimed vectors only or unprimed variables only so this is exactly i am trying to write down because you already know that uh, the coulomb's law contain r minus or prime so there is r there is r prime so i want to i want to emphasize Uh, i want to emphasize that this particular del is going to operate only on unprimed variables only so uh, let me therefore complete this writing here okay so this is very clear so uh, we are interested to now evaluate the uh, partial derivatives there is a do by do x do by do x etc so therefore something is interesting here so and not not only interesting it's important to note this particular point that if you perform the uh, do by do x of x minus x prime then this is exactly equal to uh, do x by do x which is 1 so the point is that whether you use x minus x prime that is a point the point is that whether you whether you take x minus x prime and then differentiate with respect to i'll write derivative uh if you if you take the derivative with respect to x with respect to x if you take the differentiation then we will get the same answer as that as that of x instead of x minus x prime so what do you understand whether you take x minus x prime or whether you take x whatever be the case our derivative is only one so it doesn't change derivative doesn't change so because of this reason what happens is mathematics is a little bit comfortable okay you don't have to struggle too much that is the point that, that i would like to tell okay so therefore this point has to be remembered and once this is clear uh, we will uh, we will move we will move forward to evaluate the uh, gauss divergence theorem okay first let us evaluate the lhs then we will come to the rhs so where is the left hand side you can see so that is the one okay you have to evaluate the you have to evaluate the volume integral so if you evaluate the volume integral so that would be the that would be the left hand side okay so that's clear right so remember the left hand side and we are going to write that so our aim is therefore to evaluate the left hand side of the gauss divergence theorem so let me therefore write down the volume integral volume integral of the divergence of the function f is what we are going to evaluate so which is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of what is our function our function is r by r cap by r square remember r cap so r cap by r square then volume integral dv so dv is volume integral so you know what is dv so dv means Uh, something like a small volume elemental volume so it's certainly three dimensional right volume means three dimensional in cartesian how it looks like is dx dy dz that's what i'm trying to say so it is equivalent to the product dx dy dz uh, that is what we mean to say dv dv is the volume so now it is clear that we have to evaluate this particular uh, del dot and here the 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 point is that everything is in the spherical polar coordinate system instead your yes, spelling is not correct so 
so you can uh, now understand what we are i am trying to say now x minus x prime is the original one but we are only using or the reason is whether you use or minus or prime or you use or the differentiation gives you the same result so because of that reason the, we have, we don't have to struggle with r minus r prime every time okay so how do you know that means this is how you know so i am now showing where it is just now we have shown that the derivative if you take for uh, r minus r prime or r with respect to only r you get the derivative same so for that reason what happens is you don't have to every time write r minus r prime that is what i am trying to say so we'll come down now so th so therefore what happens is we are going to use r instead of r minus r prime that's the first thing the second point i would like to tell is this one yeah r denotes the radial distance right so uh, this is the second point that you already know that it is uh, the radius of the sphere and therefore it is in spherical polar coordinate system so this is already explained so but however i am writing for clarity so the so the divergence operator we have to we have to do on spherical polar coordinate system that is what i i would like to emphasize we are going to perform the divergence this particular divergence operator we have to evaluate in the spherical polar coordinate system okay not in the cartesian so that's what i am trying to write in the yellow color uh, yellow color uh, letter okay so uh, which means that now you need to know uh, how to express the uh, gradient uh, uh, divergence and the laplacian so therefore uh, uh, let me therefore make a small explanation about the about the ex about expressing the gradient operator the divergence operator del dot and the laplacian operator del square okay let me explain how to write these operators in the spherical polar coordinate system of course we are not going to make a, a big derivation on that okay so uh, this is uh, something that i would like to uh, make it clear uh, that uh, we are not going to make any derivation of uh, uh, the gradient operator divergence operator and the del square operator that we are not going to do uh, but instead of that i i would i would make a small explanation on how to easily remember these expressions in the spherical polar coordinate system so uh, usually the expressions or the formulas for the gradient is available uh, in any of the textbooks on mathematics as well as on electrodynamics but however what i would like to emphasize here is that if you use a particular notation uh, we are going to use the suffix notation if you are going to use a particular notation then it is somewhat comfortable to remember uh, the expression or the the formula for the uh, divergence del dot as well as the uh, laplacian operator it is very easy to remember because the the final the final formula will look almost identically same for these two things and this being the and this being a vector quantity the, this will be a small uh, deviation will be there from the appearance but these two things okay this del dot and del square will have almost a similar appearance which means that it is easy to remember so i would like to explain this particular point and once once i finish the explanation we will come to the del dot for the today's class work we need a del dot operator okay we don't want a gradient operator we don't want this del square for today's work okay later we may be requiring but for today's work this is the one so we will come back to this particular point and that's uh, then uh, then let us continue the discussion so i'll go to a different board now this is full now so i'll take another board okay so uh, what is the purpose is that uh, uh, what what kind of uh, way is there to remember so a way to remember and understand the symbols okay so this is not derivation that's what i am trying to explain i some kind of methodology to remember and understand the symbols used in the symbols used in gradient divergence and laplacian gradient divergence and laplacian so that is the plan uh, we can quickly finish this in 5 minutes and once the symbol is clear that particular symbol we are going to use to evaluate the left hand side of the gauss divergence theorem so for that what we will do is let us consider a scalar u so i'll write down first let us consider a scalar okay so the moment i say scalar automatically vector symbol is not there similarly you also consider a vector u so both of them i want to use u that is the point to be noted okay scalar also u vector also u so you can now understand how do you express u r a r plus u theta a theta plus 
you can write down u phi a phi which means they are components u r u theta u phi are the components and i can say that this is the radial component or we say r component you can say radial component of the u vector and then that will be the theta component of the u vector and similarly the other one the other ar is uh, unit vectors and here and here you see that this is a scalar so uh, there is uh, no components are there okay this is a single number u so therefore uh, we don't require any components there so both of them are u that is a point to be noted scalar also u vector also u we are considering two different things but the symbol we are trying to use same so let me highlight that scalar is also u and you don't have any components there and we will also consider a vector whose symbol is u so this is the first point second point is that we will consider how to denote the partial derivative so i'll write down that so let us have let us have the symbols for the partial derivative let us have the notation or something like that notation let us have the notation for the partial derivatives what kind of notation is that using suffix so i'll say that it is called a suffix notation so what do you mean by that so what is meant by suffix notation i'll explain usually how do you write a partial derivative let me write down usually partial derivative is written down like u do u by do x isn't it if you are taking x derivative yeah if if you are taking x derivative i will be writing do u by do x but what happens is i don't want this kind of expression let us denote this by a, a suffix notation ux similarly do u by do y means i will represent it by uy so what you understand is that whenever there is a suffix present uh, then that will represent the partial derivative so this is another notation that we are going to use so which means that in the case of the uh, in the case of the polar coordinate r theta phi we are going to use so now it is clear that uh, partial derivatives in this spherical polar coordinate system along the r direction along theta direction along phi direction is represented by u r u theta and u phi mm -hmm. so remember that this is how the symbols will look for the partial derivatives with respect to r with respect to theta and with respect to phi but but now uh, let us go back and see let us go back and see do you have u r similar expression you have u r there yes it is there but is this u r a partial derivative no that, that is an r component of u similarly you have a u theta but u theta is not partial derivative that is theta component similarly u phi u phi is not a partial derivative it is known as the phi component of the u vector so now you understand that the same symbol is there you have two meanings are there same symbol is there two meanings are there will you get any confusion there is a question okay so i am going to say that we will not going we are not going to have any confusion to make it clear here i will write down that the symbol for the partial derivative is meaningful where u is a scalar quantity okay so that you don't have any confusion so now you, please understand that even though u r appears in different places there is no confusion at all why there is no confusion is u r can represent i'll write down u r can represent a partial derivative do u by do r in addition to that u r can also represent okay there is another possibility that it can also represent the r component of the u vector both are possible but you don't have any confusion because one is for the scalar another one is for vector so that is why there is no confusion okay so that point i will write down if u is a scalar so whenever u is a scalar automatically this will represent partial derivative if u is a vector okay if u is a vector then those uh, suffix notation will represent the components so therefore there is no confusion uh, so we can use the same symbol u r so this is what i mean to say notation notation and uh, some kind of uh, method if this is followed then what happens is it is easy to remember the formula so i'll write down uh, this particular point once this particular suffix notation is comfortable for you okay because no confusion is there therefore it is supposed to be comfortable so with this kind of a suffix notation uh, we can now uh, write down the uh, we can now write down the formula for the gradient let me first write down the formula for the gradient so gradient of the scalar u is equal to scalar u is important gradient of the scalar u equal to u r a r plus 1 over r u theta a theta cap plus 1 by r sin theta 1 by r sin theta u phi multiplied by a phi cap where a phi cap is the unit vectors 
so this is basically the uh, gradient operator okay in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system so here the points to be noted here is that u r uh, now you have to tell whether u r represent uh, the 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 r component of u is that meaning or whether u r represent partial derivative do u by do r what is it so now it is very easy to remember how do you remember is this u is a scalar you can't put a vector here because gradient cannot be operated on a vector that you already know gradient can be operated only on a scalar therefore u is a scalar if u is a scalar u r represents do u by do r u theta represents do u by do theta u phi represents do u by do phi so these are derivatives so no confusion at all and if you if you know the if you know the derivation of the spherical polar coordinate system which we have done i mean in the bsc level electromagnetism course what is called the first level course on electromagnetism uh, i have made a, a, a one video on the spherical polar coordinate system and if you refresh that once uh, you will be able to understand why 1 by r why r comes in some places and r sin theta comes in another place and basically r sin theta is nothing but the the shadow or projection if you have a pencil of uh, of length r okay and then if you put a light on top of that then how how long the pencil will look or what is the length of the pencil the length of the pencil will be given by r times sin theta okay that is the length of the pencil that will be uh, that will be visible on the floor if you shine light from the above so that is r sin theta so that's why the r sin theta frequently comes in the in the spherical polar coordinate system whereas r represent the original original radius okay this is not the projection so that is why r comes and r sin theta comes so so once the idea is clear here there is nothing because this is the radius so uh, there is no no term coming into picture here when you are when you are making the angular that means the the vertical circle theta and the horizontal circle you have to make the projection and measure so that is why the 1 over r and 1 over r sin theta appears in the picture the usually the first term uh, one doesn't have so let us not go much in detail why why there is a one here why 1 by r is there why 1 by r sin theta is there so these factors uh, namely one here that is one into right this is one into ur so there is a first factor is one second factor is 1 by r third factor is 1 by r sin theta such factors are known as h factors okay h factors so uh, you must have studied in uh, mathematical physics what is known as curvilinear coordinate system so you take any uh, mathematics book the h symbol will be present okay those terms or these are the terms so once the idea about the uh, the derivation of the spherical polar coordinate system is uh, clear to you then writing down this expression is is comfortable not only comfortable and it is also meaningful that whether it is representing vector quantity or scalar quantity okay so with this in mind let us now write down the divergence expression so the divergence of the uh, u vector now it is u vector okay divergence of a u vector is given by 1 over r square r square u r r you please read how how i am reading that reading is what is comfortable 1 divided by r sin theta then you have sin theta u theta theta sin theta u theta theta then plus then you will be writing 1 divided by r sin theta 1 divided by r sin theta into u phi phi so i'll write down u phi phi so once that is clear then we will be having then we can now write down for the expression for the laplacian but i would like to i would like to say that this is the expression for the divergence of a vector vector is important divergence means it is for vector not for scalar so that is the point and in the earlier case it is a gradient means it is only for a scalar so now we will write down the last expression that is for the laplacian so del square is laplacian operator for a scalar now we are writing it for the scalar okay del square scalar uh, del square operating on the scalar will be given by it is looking identically similar expression you see 1 over r square there are only small changes okay so it looks very similar okay multiplied by r square u r r plus 1 divided by r square sin theta into same thing will be there sin theta u theta theta then you have a plus 
1 divided by r square sin square theta into u phi phi so everywhere it is the same expression so therefore now it is easy to remember so i will once again read this and then show uh, after writing the title so what is the title that i would like to write is this is the laplacian of a scalar now this is for a scalar okay so now one is for the vector one is for the scalar and that is previous one is also for the scalar these are the points to be noted now once it is clear let us see how the appearance is the appearance is going to be very similar r square u r r same thing is there see r square u r r is same then come sin theta u theta theta identically same u phi phi u phi phi okay so you you have u phi phi in both divergence as well as for the as well as on the laplacian operator there is a point to be noted so because of the identical appearance uh, it is easy to remember these things these expressions are easy to remember so so that is clear so i would like to mention one important point here so u r can represent as as usual u r may be representing either the partial derivative do u by do r so that is do u by do r okay do u by do r or it can also represent the or it can also represent the r component of u so this point is clear now there is no confusion so you can easily decide okay this can be easily decided this can be easily decided without confusion so now uh, this particular uh, formula for the all the three formula for the uh, gradient divergence and the del square is uh, available and then it is easy to remember now let me explain here what is the meaning of this ur you know it verify whether i am writing correctly or not so this must be a partial derivative okay it is not r component but but come to another place let me choose another one in yellow color uh, so what is the meaning of this suffix r this suffix r is partial derivative so it is the partial derivative of whatever quantity is there in the bracket that is r square u r similarly that will be the partial derivative that is theta and not only that phi also so all these things are partial derivative with respect to the r partial derivative with respect to theta and partial derivative with respect to phi so that is clear now we will go to another formula and then let me show in green color what is the meaning of this ur is it partial derivative or r component so that is an r component how do you know means because the formula is for a vector okay divergence of a u vector right therefore it is r component but that small suffix r which is in yellow color now i am showing it must be a partial derivative so which is partial derivative and which is component you can easily identify there is no trouble at all and the formula looks almost identically same and therefore it is easy to remember so this is what i am trying to say if you don't like this for some reason you can always uh you can always see the appearance of the formula that are given in different textbooks okay but this particular style uh, is more comfortable for me so that i can remember the formulas i don't have to refer to a uh, textbook for the formula okay so that's the point that i would like to mention so u r u theta and so what is this u this u is important so how why where from the u came is that we are going to we are starting with considering a vector we we are starting by considering a scalar okay that's what it is so once these things are clear let us go back to uh, let us go back to our discussion on the gauss divergence theorem yeah so all these things are discussed so let us go to the gauss divergence theorem where it is i think this is the place right yeah this one so that is the gauss divergence theorem uh, we have to evaluate for that but where is the left hand side and right hand side we have to see so the board is full again i'll move to another place in the board so let us try to evaluate the gauss divergence theorem for the function r by r square so our objective is clear we are interested to evaluate the gauss divergence theorem for the function r cap by r square that is the objective and uh, what is the meaning meaning is let me write down r cap is the unit vector there is another symbol for the unit vector that is ar cap because usually ar cap is the uh, standard notation in spherical polar coordinate system so we will use that and what about the 1 by r square 1 by r square is scalar or vector it's a scalar r square right r square cannot be a vector r square means r dot r therefore it is a scalar 
so now you know which is vector which is scalar and let us therefore evaluate uh, using our notation our notation means we are going to use the symbol u okay we are going to consider a symbol u that is how we are going to start which means that uh, what do you mean by that which means that you have to select u equal to r by r square that's the meaning uh, the purpose of using u is that it is comfortable to read and therefore we will identify that u vector is nothing but the r cap vector by r square that's all about it and uh, if you want to use it in in the in the in the three components now we can ask the question where are the three components so the first component is 1 by r square a r cap then plus second component is not there so i will put a zero and similarly third component is also zero in the phi direction so by writing this explicitly uh, you understand that the two components are zero okay so radial component is 1 by r square okay theta component theta component is zero and then the phi component is also zero so that is what is clearly visible if you use this particular symbol u vector now once this is clear now we are ready to evaluate the divergence of the u vector so i will write down the formula for the divergence of the u vector i will read like this 1 by r square r square u r r plus 1 by r sin theta sin theta u theta theta plus once again 1 by r sin theta u phi phi so the the way in which we read you know that is what is going to uh, help you to remember so the point to be noted is it is not that uh, uh, this has to be memorized the, because it is easy to read i am choosing this particular symbol u and there is a r here there is a r here so it is easy to read u r r okay so this is what i am trying to read u r r and this is u theta theta and u phi phi so it is easy to read 1 by r square same r square will come here okay 1 by r sin theta same sin theta will come here and one once again you will be having this particular sin theta but but usually what happens is that the last term doesn't contain sin theta sin square theta okay well, because the projection takes place uh, from this particular uh, vertical circle so once that is clear readable readability is easy how do you read is r square u r r sin theta u theta theta then you you read u phi phi so which means that it is easy to write if you remember in terms of partial derivative remember that you have to write do by do r of okay anyway that is visible in your textbook you can compare so you open any textbook that you like and compare the formula and whichever way you write and that is up to you okay so there is nothing special here now once you once you know uh, that this is the expression now let us evaluate uh, how do you evaluate let us substitute what is the value for the u theta zero so i'll i'll highlight that u theta is zero put that zero here and similarly u phi is also zero right so two terms are going to zero so therefore our job is easy now so let us therefore write down that this expression equal to 1 over r square sorry we will take in white color so that will be equal to 1 over r square then you get r square into 1 over r square because ur is 1 by r square then r derivative plus 0 that second is also 0 so it is actually 0 plus 0 last to two terms <coughs> so if you simplify that 1 by r square into 1 then r then plus 0 okay now what is the meaning of the uh, what is the meaning of this particular uh, suffix r is that it is a partial derivative right so that is clear to you so which means that you have to perform the partial derivative of 1 what is the derivative of 1 0 right so now it is clear that the divergence of u is actually 0 and which means that now we don't want u what is our original expression so our original expression is in terms of r by r square so this means divergence of r by r square is 0 and in terms of the coulomb's law representation we have the script r remember we started with the script r so now i will write that therefore we can write down the divergence of let me write down divergence of del dot i am trying to write del dot okay del dot then you have the script r vector you have the script r vector divided by r square that is equal to 0 
so both of them are same uh, whether you write or or whether you write script or both of them are same i already explained the reason because uh, when you are performing the derivative or minus or prime or or both are both of them are giving the same result so our our job is now completed for the left hand side so our left hand side of the gauss divergence theorem gives you zero that is fine now the question is what will be the value for the right hand side of the gauss divergence theorem so let us evaluate let me just separate this board because these things we have previously written so it should not disturb now i'll put some vertical line separation okay so so let us now come to the uh, right hand side of the gauss divergence theorem okay let us discuss the rhs of rhs of the gd theorem gd theorem means gauss divergence theorem so what is uh, how the right hand side looks like it is the surface integral of f dot ds f dot ds means normal component of f so uh, do you remember that i think let us go back and verify i'll show you the gauss divergence theorem that we have written previously yeah it is there here it is there now you can see the right hand side so the right hand side is a surface integral okay so the green color one i am showing so the right hand side is a surface integral left hand side is a volume integral so let us therefore write down that f dot ds and as usual what do you mean by the ds let me explain what is ds ds means a small surface area <coughs> we can say that it is elemental elemental surface area surface area of what surface area of sphere so surface area of sphere of some fixed radius okay i will say constant radius so that is the meaning of the uh, the expression that we have written for the right hand side of the gauss divergence theorem and you must be able to know what is this uh, surface area let me once again explain this how this r times d theta comes see uh, this expressions are quite uh, uh, simple once you are familiar with the spherical polar coordinate system but for the time being i will explain uh, how this r times d theta comes when you have a rectangle or a square if you have a rectangle then this is what is dx then this is dy so dx into dy will represent the area surface area ds that is clear right so basically this is nothing but if you have a rectangle like this this will be dx and that will be dy so that is clear now in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system one of the sides that is a vertical as i already told you theta means always vertical circle so in the vertical circle you will be considering the full radius r when you are coming to the horizontal circle that means in the phi direction you have to take the projection of r projection of r means the shadow okay the projection of r on the horizontal plane is r sin theta r sin theta is a smaller right if you have a pencil of length r its shadow will be smaller than that when you are going to show when you are going to shine the light from above okay so in that case the 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 shadow will be smaller than that as you can see r sin theta will be always smaller than the r so that is why uh, this length comes so this is also same thing like r d theta only thing is r into sin theta is your new radius so this r into sin theta is a new radius new radius multiplied by d phi this is old radius multiplied by d theta so it is the same r d theta concept only is there in both the places so therefore this will be one side that will be another side if you multiply these two things you will be getting the uh, a small surface area on the surface of the sphere and where remember that the radius of the sphere is not changing that is very important you have to fix the sphere only then you can integrate when you are performing the integration you should not allow the radius to grow okay so the integration is on a surface a uh, surface of what means it is a surface of a sphere okay whether the sphere is growing or shrinking means no the the you are fixing a particular sphere and then you are evaluating so that is how you are going to do and because of that reason r is a fixed one you don't have dr that's what i am trying to say the radius is fixed means what dr term is not there that is dr if it is there it should be zero so r is a constant what is variable is theta is variable in the vertical circle and uh, phi is varying that is a horizontal circle so that is the meaning of this particular ds uh, i will also next write down what is the meaning of this f here 
Now the function is very clear that we are going to choose the function to be r by r square. So now the unit vectors are clear for you. So once these things are clear, now we are ready to evaluate the right hand side which is nothing but the surface integral of r by r square r cap i'll write down r cap by r square then you get a dot this is f dot this is actually f dot ds is nothing but the product so if you multiply that i'll be getting r square then you get a sine theta d theta d phi then you have an r cap and that's all so as usual the integral is a is a uh, definite integral because you have the valid limits are there and it is a surface integral therefore I will put double integral and then the phi, phi will take the uh, one integral, theta will take another integration so phi takes from 0 to 2 pi and uh, theta takes from 0 to pi these are the standard expressions for the spherical polar coordinate system and cancel the r square and we get this expression sin theta into d theta into d phi and that's all this r dot this is these two things are there r dot r let me write down r dot r unit vectors will give you one so that will not uh, appear in the equation and finally we are left with a simple integration so let us evaluate this so what is integral of sine theta minus cos theta right so let us write down that limits uh, 0 to pi okay that is over then come to the phi d phi integration is phi then put 0 to 2 pi and minus if you take outside I will write down it as cos pi minus cos 0 and multiply it by 2 pi minus 0 so that gives you minus 1 minus 1 2 then you get 4 pi so that's all 4 pi is your right hand side So right hand side is 4 pi, left hand side you remember what you, what answer you got for left hand side, you got 0 right, if you remember what value you got for the left hand side, let me write down that, I want to write like this but, but left hand side is 0 okay. So how can you have uh, the same equation namely the Gauss divergence theorem? Gauss divergence theorem says that left hand side and right hand side are equal. That is what is the statement. Now we are getting 0 on side and 4 by another side. So what, what do you mean by if you are writing like this the meaning is this. This means, this means we are trying to say that we are trying to say that the, the Gauss divergence theorem is Gauss divergence theorem is not valid for the function for the function some function which is written by e r cap divided by r square that is what that is what it means our calculation means this okay do you want to agree for this so that is what it is but our vector calculus uh, says that what is the statement of the vector, vector calculus vector calculus says that gauss divergence theorem is supposed to be valid gauss divergence theorem is valid for all the vector valued functions that is the statement of the gauss divergence theorem so it doesn't give any exception okay you can uh, you can eliminate some functions uh, like that there is no such rule gauss divergence theorem is valid for uh, valid for vector valued functions okay provided the continuity and differentiabilities are satisfied okay so once that is satisfied gauss divergence theorem is valid this is vector calculus but uh, right now we got zero on one side and uh, Okay, green color. I would like to put in white color. White color highlighting. So, Gauss divergence theorem is supposed to be valid for all vector valued functions. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, what is the plan that we have? Okay, so this is the place uh, where I would like to stop in today's class. So, you know what happened now. We have considered a particular function r cap by r square. Remember, this is r cap. r cap is also represented by a r cap. Both of them are unit vectors. And of course, r by r square, why do you want to consider this kind of a function is? This function is what is present in the 
Coulomb's law. So therefore, this function is important for us. And uh, uh, the the pity is the in the very beginning. That means in the very very starting point of the uh, Coulomb's law, the when we are taking the r by r square function, your Gauss divergence theorem is not satisfied. I mean, left hand side is zero, right hand side is four pi. It appears uh, something is wrong. Uh, so you have to make some resolution uh, whether we have done our calculation wrong or that we have to understand uh, something better. So that is what we have to think, and uh, this particular uh, information is very important so that you you will be able to do uh, an appropriate justice to the uh, way in which you write down the Maxwell's equations. Okay, so let us therefore discuss in our next class uh, how are we going to resolve the issue. Uh, that the that the the two sides of the Gauss divergence theorem are not matching. So how to explain? Uh, if, if you want to explain this, uh, do you have a valid explanation, or or that you want to modify certain thing? Okay, that part that kind of discussion we will do in the next class. Okay.